Hello and welcome back. Hey, today we are going to be tiptoeing through the garden that is sex, politics, religion, and cultural differences when you're writing. Things that are that you just shouldn't say anymore. It's getting tougher and tougher for writers in general, much tougher than it was two years ago, five years ago, and certainly 10 years ago, because we have to watch everything we say. I am drinking a cup of chai tea while we're doing this, Lauren, but I'm thinking I might need something a little stronger to get through this. Oh, when, yeah. when, did you, <laughs> when did you become aware of words that just were simply unacceptable to use in your books, manuscripts, that sort of thing? Well, I had several books out. And it was when uh, Three Days to Forever came out in at uh, the end of 2014. And I kind of, you know, I, 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 I was kind of aware because, you know, I'm, I'm not a politically, I, I'm a registered independent. I am, you know, and Three Days to Forever was the first book. It was Mac Verity where I actually touched on terrorism. 2014, there were, you know, we had Al Qaeda, you know, everybody was concerned about, you know, um, you know, terrorists and the Middle Eastern terrorists and that. And somebody had talked to, you know, a friend of mine was talking to, who was just a little bit more politically motivated, was talking about terrorists in America. And that. And as a writer, I actually thought, hey, you know, that's what writers do. We say, what if? That's right. And so whenever you get into terrorism, you have a little bit of politics in there and, you know, terrorism that infiltrates our government. And so I wrote this whole plot line about that. And since I had terrorism and what, you know, uh, you know, terrorists infiltrate the government and infiltrate, you know, the administration, I, you know, I thought, oh, maybe, you know, so I actually had in the book, it was the first book that I had terrorism in it. And I had a disclaimer at the beginning saying, this has nothing to do with politics. What writers do is we think, what if uh, I didn't mention any political parties? I did not mention any presidents by name, uh, you know, and I had that disclaimer and I actually had a few reviewers and some readers, not not about the book. They had no complaint about the book, but that I was accusing our president of being a terrorist. <laughs> you know, and I had one even on Audible, he actually said, the fact that she has a disclaimer at the beginning proves that she knew what she was doing was wrong. You know, and even though I went to this, you know, so it was just because, you know, uh, you know, and that was the first time I became aware of how sensitive our culture is. Now, I have no regrets about writing that book. Mm -hmm. It's just that I'm aware, you know, and I think it's what it's one of my favorite books. If you know, ask me for a list of what my favorite books that I've written, Three Days Forever is right up there. But what. I am aware is that we, our culture now is ultra sensitive. There Absolutely. are leaders who are yeah. ultra sensitive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you know, a lot of families have rules. When you sit down at the Thanksgiving dinner table or the Christmas table or even Sunday brunch, there are subjects that are not brought up at that family table. And of course, it's politics, religion, and possibly cultural differences. I would never bring up sex at a family dinner. But, you know, okay, <laughs> let's put that on the table too. Um, but I was brought to it when you said to me, I, I had used a word in one of my Fiona Quinn books, and I know that the book is in my Owl's Nest Mysteries, too. I'm sure it's in all of the First Force books, and there is no doubt that that is in the Unbridled books. But the word was crazy. This is yeah. a word that they no longer want you to use. And there is a list out there of words that they don't want you to use, and here is the replacement for that word. And the replacement for the word crazy is dazzling. dazzling. 
<laughs> now, everybody. It doesn't mean the same thing. <laughs> right. Think, just close your eyes for a minute and think of the word dazzling. When you think of the word dazzling, do you think of diamonds, rhinestones, <laughs> stars, maybe a gorgeous ball gown? You do not think of the word crazy. This woman just in, in the book, let's say in your manuscript, some woman just stabbed someone 12 times in the back. And the detective looks up from his notes and says, that's just dazzling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know who's making up those lists, but they need to rethink. Um, like I said, it is very sensitive and it's becoming very, very difficult to maneuver when you're writing because you, every time you write something, you know, you're thinking, OK, am I allowed to use that word? And of course, there are obvious words out there that you're not allowed to use and haven't been able to be used in many, many years. And we all know what those words are. And there are words I wouldn't use anyway. But the words like crazy, I get it. I get it. a lot of people are very sensitive about mental illness issues. But there's a lot of things that people will look at something and just say, wow, that's just crazy you know, a lot of things. Yeah, and then they should be tarred and feathered. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How dare you say that? <laughs> right. So what now, you run into that with your time travel book because, you know, you, you know, like words that people would use regularly in the right. 1950s or 60s that they don't say now. No, no, no. It wasn't, it wasn't my time travel. It was Fiona Quinn. It was um, my Fiona Quinn series, and it wasn't um, one of the books. It was a short story. I think yeah. I've mentioned this before on this program. The word was gypsy because mm -hmm. it was a, a person who was a next door neighbor, Astrid Dingle, who has a um, fortune telling business down in the basement of her home. <laughs> yes, a, a little bit on the odd side. Uh, maybe she might be a little dazzling as well. But um, <laughs> she... Um, Fiona made the comment, or maybe Fiona's mother, Nancy, made the comment, oh, she's kind of like a gypsy. Well, a reviewer took big time offense for that. You know, oh, this is terrible that she would use the word gypsy. Oh, come on. Um, like I and, said, and at that time, we, you know, you, you didn't know that that would be considered racist. And you know what? I still don't know that yeah. because... I have heard the word on TV since then on brand new television shows. I have seen it in brand new books. And on top of all of that, as I said before, I don't know what Broadway is going to do because they've got a show that they run there every so often. You know what it's called? Gypsy. Gypsy. And it has yeah. been a Broadway show since the 1920s. So, um, you know, I, I kind of, I just kind of rolled my eyes and, you know, I've never used the word since, but then again, it's never come up. But uh, yeah, so what do we do, Lauren? What do we do as writers? And well, we call each other and we say, you know, well, you know, I'm going to broach this topic. And do you think that somebody may be offended? And how does our conversation always end? It ends with no matter what you do, someone is going to be offended. Exactly. You know, and that's what you have, you know, what you have to be careful is that you're not going to be setting out to offend great masses of people, you know. Right, and, right. You have to be careful. I mean, you know, and, and so far I've really not had too many problems with it. Like I said, the other day on the program, we talked about the word badass. And um, Fiona had done something that saved her own life and her husband said, my wife is a badass. I was going to write it, but I didn't. Instead, yeah. I wrote Firecracker. But it came up on the, um, it actually came up on my word um, thing on my manuscript on the laptop saying this word may be considered offensive. Mm -hmm. And so I looked it up. I actually looked it up. And they said, you know, that it's it's not even considered a swear word anymore. Were you aware of that? No, it's I wasn't aware. Considered See, a swear now, word I don't. Anymore. I don't say that 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 word, you know, because yeah. I'm a little bit more 
you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, shut up. You don't use those words. It, was, it wasn't a bad word, but because Fiona Quinn is a cozy mystery, I substituted it with the word firecracker. Firecracker. He's a little yeah. firecracker. Cracker. And um, so that's how I fixed it. So, yeah, if there's a word or a phrase that comes up that perhaps someone could find it to be offensive. But even I'm so, thinking. even though you write cozies, you do touch a little bit more you know, on, uh, like you have a character, you know, who's uh, uh, homosexual in your Owl's Nest Mysteries. I do. He he yeah. is the tailor at the Owl's Nest Mysteries. His name is Holden. And he is, he's gay. And, um, you know, I'm very careful with what I do with the character because I, I don't want to offend the gay community. And I don't want to offend anybody who's reading the book in any way. So I'm very careful with Holden. Um, and so far, I've not had any problems. You know, just you just have to kind of, as we say, tiptoe tip -tip. through the tulips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Which I'm just hard. Like... But, but, Cindy, you have to admit that it's hard when you're writing mystery or suspense or thriller because they, you know, because there's only so many motives. For murder right. okay. and it could be you know religion or culture or you know um you know it, it you know some of those things they creep in because that's what puts the conflict in there that can lead to murder right and if you totally. don't use any of those if you are just you, as a writer you'll end up being paralyzed because I can't do that because it may offend somebody. I can't right. do this because it may, you know, well, I can't have that type of character because, you know, it may, you know, or or maybe if I use that type of character and they do something that's considered stereotype, then somebody's going to be offended. So you and I, whenever we have these conversations, hey, do you think I should do this? You know, and then, you know, the conversation ends with, go ahead. <laughs> well, we just we just try to smooth it out is what we do we try to smooth it out we try to make it as um acceptable as possible um <laughs> excuse me but yeah sex politics religion cultural di di uh, differences and of course money always is fodder for murder i mean what else is there you know really mm -hmm. what else is there and um, sex and money and politics are probably the top three, but yeah. And you're, you know, so you just gotta, you know, and anyone who's too sensitive, they're just going to have to, you know, grow some guts or, <laughs> or, or, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to have to do, but I, I, do know that, <laughs> I do know that I have done a lot of adjustments. I know you have done a lot of adjustments in the last 10 years. I probably have had to do less than you you have since I no longer write the um, romantic suspense books. I, you know, I, I really probably don't do nearly the adjustments that you have to do because I write cozy mysteries. And cozy mysteries have those lines that you tow no matter what, you know, whether before the, the differences, before any of the sensitivities, we were towing those lines long before that. So I probably don't have to make it many as many adjustments as you have to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and on my side, since I have the police procedurals, then, you know, then, you know, I have to, you know, in order to be edgy, I have to touch just a little bit on them, but I have to really be sensitive to what my characters say, you know, and it's what my characters are. Who my, I, I'm not sure. You have to make them interesting. You and have to make them why, interesting. So you have to, they have to be just a little bit edgy. And you have the, to have them be edgy. Right. And, and, you know, in, in my books, even the cozies, as you know, and you have said to me, wow, I think you're pretty brave. I use a lot of cultures. Yeah. You know, and that's I, what I was thinking about in the owl's nest. Yeah. You I actually double dog of, there. You had a mixed race couple. I had a mixed race couple and, you, and, and, really I, and I that. did talk about how unacceptable that was back in the time that I was writing the book that, you know, the, those um, black and white couples were not welcomed into society as they are today. Yeah. So I had to touch on that. And of course, my character um, was very appalled by the fact that they weren't being 
accepted. And my character, Bobby Starr, who is the angel, of course, said, hey, you gotta remember, this isn't 2024. This is 1962. You know, they're, they're not, it's not the same, it's not the same era. So, um, yeah, you have to be careful. When you wrote that part that basically you were writing that for your readers to let them know. Oh yes. I I definitely will write something for my readers to say, Hey, now remember this isn't present day. This is in the past and this is how it was back then. You know, Mm -hmm. I still avoid bad words, but you know, this is how it was. I think in one of the Owl's Nest, as you pointed out to me the other day, uh, my character um, said to Detective Slater, he was an African-American man. And this is like in the, the 50s. And he looked at her and he said, he was a what? Yep. <laughs> I wrote it for my readers. You must remember back in the 50s, there were a lot of names for black individuals and African-American wasn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> she had to readjust what she said. Oh, I'm sorry. He was a black man. And 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 Slater went, oh, OK. <laughs> like, yeah. what was she talking about? But yeah, they weren't called that back then. So yeah, I will inform the reader. Hey, you know, don't get upset because this wasn't the way it was back then. But I do like to use a lot of different cultures. I, I as you know, I use Indian people. I use um, uh, Russians. I, I love using Russians. Um, <laughs> I, and I, I've used Caribbeans. Um, so I, because I enjoy using different cultures and bringing them into the books and including them. But it does bring a level of be careful. Tiptoeing. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. And so writers, authors, we want to know what are you tiptoeing around right now? What cultures, what uh, you sex, politics, religion, cultural differences? What are you tiptoeing around right now? We would love to hear about it in our comments. You know, leave a comment and be sure to like and subscribe. Oh, and did we, we can subscribe to this channel? Yes, we can. And if we you subscribe, can. then you will hear right off as soon as we download, as soon as we, you know, goes live on uh, next Wednesday at two o'clock will be our next topic. 